Today we're talking about real estate lead generation and past clients. Did you know that 80% of people don't use the same real estate agent for their next transaction? This highlights a massive opportunity for agents. We're talking about how to stay top of mind without spamming people all the time. And if you break down the lifetime value of a client, it is absolutely staggering. And most agents are missing the mark on this. Stick around and we'll talk about your biggest asset in real estate. And of course, if you're looking at interviewing brokerages, send me an email. My info is in the description below. So why is it that the majority of the general public don't use the same real estate agent the next time around when they're buying or selling a house? Is it because they are unhappy with the first real estate agent? Surprisingly, believe it or not, that is not the case. It is simply, usually because the agent doesn't keep in touch and people will buy or sell a house on average once every seven years. That is a long time. If it is a newer agent, maybe they didn't make it seven years in the business. If it is an older agent, maybe they retired. Seven years is a long time. Or maybe agents are just a little bit short-sighted and they forget. Or maybe they feel like the transaction didn't go perfectly well and they're afraid to keep in touch. Maybe they lost their contact information. Or maybe they're just simply not organized enough. And interestingly enough, sometimes experienced agents will get called out to a list appointment with a past client and absolutely expect them to sign the contract which truth be told every single opportunity you get with a client whether it's a past client or a new client we need to earn the business every single time do not take your past clients for granted and it is always 10 times easier to repair or rebuild an existing relationship than it is to go out and generate a new customer or a new relationship, which also means that even if the transaction didn't go perfectly well, it's still an easier and more cost-effective opportunity by a factor of 10 to use that obstacle as an opportunity to show your character in your ability to solve problems problems and make things right. And if it's been months or years since you've done a real estate transaction with this person and you are concerned about how the transaction didn't go as smoothly as you would have liked it to, do you really think that the general public is sitting there thinking, I can't believe that the timeline for the home inspection was not as perfect as I would have hoped when I bought my house. No, they're thinking, Chris helped me buy this house three years ago and I really enjoy this home for myself and my family. Thank you, Chris. And let's add one more element to that. If you are experienced and you've been in the business a long time and you sold somebody a house 10 years ago and then two years later, they bought or sold a house with a different agent and you took them off your list, keep in mind that agent is also probably not still keeping in touch and adding value on a regular consistent basis. So if you re-adopt old contacts back into your sphere of influence, they're not stopping and thinking, I will never use Chris again. It's kind of like this. Do you go to the same restaurant every time you go out to eat? No, you don't. You might have a favorite restaurant. You might go to different restaurants for different reasons, but you don't hold one restaurant against another restaurant. And especially if you're working with investors, you need to realize that a lot of bigger investors will oftentimes work with several agents, especially if they are working in purchasing in different marketplaces. And if you are a new agent, get this objection and this obstacle out of your mind right now when you stop and think and say, everybody that I know already has a real estate agent. Well, if 80% of the public is not going to use the same agent twice because the other agent isn't keeping in touch as good as they should be, that then means the general public is going to do business with whoever has most impressed them most recently and added value most recently. So be that agent. And again, what is the lifetime value of one client? I'll give you a perfect example. I sold a mobile home a number of years ago. I think it was like a $20,000 sale. Whoopity do. I think I paid more in transaction fees than I did in commission. I think I actually lost money on the deal. But that client referred me to another client for another mobile home. 
for a similar price point and a similar scenario. But that client sold their mobile home, bought a condo with us for $100,000, and had three daughters that all bought properties for $450,000 within a one to two year period following that transaction. And keep in mind too, you never know who that person knows and you never know how the series of events in that person's life will unfold. Always focus on the person, one person at a time and one relationship at a time because over the course of your real estate career, whether it be 10, 15, 20 years or more, things will continue to snowball and add consistent momentum over time. I'll give you another example. I did business with a for sale by owner who had their property on the market and was getting a ton of phone calls from a ton of real estate agents. And I built good rapport with this person. And they said that they had to go and have some medical issues taken care of and they can't move in the near future, but they will need to. I added that person to my sphere of influence, kept in touch with that person, Five years later, they finally listed their house for half a million dollars. It sold quickly. And then over the course of the next two years, I believe I did 12 or 14 transactions from that original source through referrals, family members, etc. So never underestimate the value of one relationship. So how do I stay in touch or how should I stay in touch? Well, of course, we have regular old phone calls. We have text messages. We have email campaigns. Campaigns, we have email messages, and we also have social media messages. And don't forget, handwritten holiday greetings or thank you cards. And if you're wondering what to say, why don't you simply just reach out at a minimum once a year by each one of those methods, alternating the method of contact so they don't feel like they're getting bombarded from you, and always approach those conversations with a theme if at the very bare minimum basic, you are just phoning them with an unsolicited market evaluation to give them an update of what their house is worth in today's market just simply for curiosity's sake. And on top of that, you could make them feel included in your exclusive community, meaning host client events and make sure that they could potentially meet somebody at one of those events or make them feel important as a result of them being invited to those events. And let me give you an example of different types of events that you could host that will help you grow your business. We have home buyer seminars, real estate investment meetups or seminars, barbecue or ice cream at the park, financial literacy workshops, charity fundraiser galas, golf tournaments, wine tasting business mixers, movie matinee or movie night, invite them out to a sports game. And here's a list of venues that you could potentially use. The local art gallery, the country club, the local brewery, maybe a rooftop patio, the beach or the park, a riverboat perhaps, private dining, your office or co-working space, a show home that you or one of your company, maybe one of the home builders, local show home would be a great venue spot, a retail store or car dealership, kids play center, museum, amusement park, maybe the zoo, and maybe even Las Vegas. Or you could even go to your own private island, perhaps, whatever works. When you're phoning to give your past clients a market evaluation, don't phone them and ask if they would like a market evaluation. Just literally do one for them and send it to them. Then phone and follow up and say, hey, did you get it? What do you think? When you do market evaluations, even if the person you're talking to is not looking to buy or sell a home at all at any point in the near future, they're going to be so thrilled and excited and grateful for the fact that you invested your time into providing value and benefit to them so that you've just reinvigorated, re-energized that person. You've added a social deposit to that relationship where now you could potentially withdraw from that when you are asking for either a testimonial or a referral. And the chances of you getting a referral at some point in the next year go up dramatically after you've offered a market evaluation to somebody in your 
past client list. Additional topics of conversation with your past clients could easily be what types of renos should they be investing their money in if they want to consider the resale value of their home. You could also talk to them about what's the latest and greatest that's happening for real estate developments in the city or in their area, especially if you think that those developments will affect the value of their property, be it city transit, maybe a new homeless shelter, or maybe it's a new arena that's coming up somewhere near their current home. And when you do this, they are not going to feel like you are bugging them. You are adding so much value that they are actually excited when you reach out to call them. Your biggest supporters in your real estate business, believe it or not, they actually want to send you business, but you need to teach them how. And I always say, you actually should not offer cash incentives for referrals. And here's why. Not because it's not worthwhile. I'm sure that it certainly is. And maybe that works for some people. But in my mind, I want people to send me referrals because they believe that people in their sphere of influence should be working with me and my team because of the customer service that we provide and because of the results that we can provide to their contacts. Reverse option is their only sending you business because of the dollar. It's not the same thing and I've actually experienced those two different scenarios in my career and it is a dramatic difference. And what does that say to all of the people that have already been sending you business and what does that say to somebody who was going to send you a referral and then all of a sudden you offer them cash? Sometimes it might make them feel cheap. They're saying, Chris, I just want to send you business because I believe in you. I'm not trying to send you business for a referral fee. And there are are so many other ways that you can add value to those relationships. Maybe you have contacts in your database, be it a landscaper or a roofing company or a window company or a painting company or an insurance person or an accountant that you could refer them to that would help them save thousands of dollars. Or perhaps you could refer them to somebody that saves them hours of time researching to find a trustworthy person who's available and accountable. Also, if they own a business, you could send them referrals referrals to their business. And with your network, you might be able to introduce them to people that they can engage with in the community. Maybe they have a nonprofit organization that they believe in. And rather than offering a kickback referral, you can offer them a multitude of additional value that is way, way beyond what some kickback might be worth. And if you really, truly do invest in those relationships and simply just offer support to them when they're going through a life event, whether it is a marriage or a divorce or a death in the family, that is going to mean so much more to them. They're going to be so much more likely to support you if you are investing in them in those ways rather than simply some sort of kickback when you do a deal. When they identify they might have a lead for you, you need to either ask them for permission to reach out to that person. And if they don't have that permission, just make sure you follow up with the referring contact, the referral source, and best case scenario, ask them to set up an introduction through a group chat, maybe an email, or even in person. Because when that person has already done business with you, your past clients are your biggest asset because they've already done business with you. And when they refer somebody to you, they can say, I actually sold my house with Chris. Things went really well. You should talk to him. It's so much more social proof. It is the best that you could possibly get in this business. And it doesn't need to cost you anything outside of you being a good realtor and being a good person to the people that have already given you business. The icing on the cake is, of course, customer testimonials, whether it is a Google business review or a video testimonial. But keep in mind, I mentioned social deposits before. Always have somewhere in your mind some sort of account where you've invested more into a relationship or you've taken more out of a relationship and make sure that you are not over asking because really you only get so many asks. So always make sure that you're not over providing. You don't want to be the martyr, of course, in any relationship, but make sure that you are investing more than you are receiving from any and every business relationship, especially your past clients. Staying organized is so important. You need to make sure that you segment your list. Here is some examples. You've got your AAA clients, your highest and biggest supporters in your business at the top. 
Then you've got your monthly prospects, you've got your sphere of influence, you've got your leads, and then your hot leads. When you go to make notes with the people that you have spoken with, make sure that you profile each person so that you don't forget anything. For example, you need to know their personality style, their family dynamic, their preferred method of contact, and significant life events that happen in their life as I'd mentioned before. When you're reaching out, make sure it is a simple three to five minute call so they are not reluctant to answer your call next time even though they want to talk to you. If you spend too much time on the phone each time you reach out, they're less likely to answer the call because everybody is busy. For your AAA clients, you're always going to be in regular touch with these people. I would say monthly would be my recommended. Likewise, for anybody that is an ongoing prospect that might be looking to do something in the not too distant future, your sphere of influence is a quarterly contact. And then of course, your leads would be weekly because they're getting close. And then your hot leads are of course, daily contacts. You want to make sure you are using a CRM system, contact retention management system to keep in touch with all of the people that you know in your network. But don't overthink this and don't overspend your time researching the right tool or implementing administratively speaking the next tool. What's most important is that you keep track and that you keep in touch. And in the beginning, it could simply be an Excel spreadsheet or a Google sheet or even just names on a sheet of paper to make sure that when you're going top to bottom on your past client list, etc., you have one place to find everybody so that you can quickly get through that in an efficient manner. Email marketing is way underrated, but make sure that you're sending something of value. In social media, you need to schedule your posts or at least have a content calendar in your schedule. Video marketing makes all the difference because it gives you the ability to enhance relationships with people without talking to them directly. And your client list is a human moving object. All the time, people are having major life events. They might move without you knowing, unfortunately, but you still do want to keep in contact with those people. They might live out of province or out of country and you still want to keep in touch with those people. They might have lost somebody that's significant to them in their family and you don't want to send the salutation to husband and wife if the wife has recently passed away, as an example, or if they've gotten divorced, likewise would be applicable as an example. So no matter what, these are all reasons why you need to make sure that you are staying in touch with people. And if they change jobs, they might have a different email address. They might have a different phone number. This list is as unique to you and your relationships as any human being is. So make sure that you treat every person as the important person that they are and keep in touch with them. It is the most valuable asset in your real estate business. I hope you found some value today. Of course, as I'd mentioned, if you're looking at interviewing real estate companies, send me an email. My info is in the description below. And otherwise, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you on this video next. Have a fantastic day.